me think of monsters or ghouls. What comes to mind? Vampires? Zombies? Werewolves? Ghosts? Mummies? But one of the minor ones you don't see much of anymore are witches. And this video will be investigating some of the witch trials that happened here in the area of Pendle in the north of England. So let's have a look around. This is a dark episode in Lancashire's history which saw 10 innocent souls condemned to death. And this is hard to believe this village here is an area of outstanding beauty has such a dark past. So let's have a look at the history of Pendle. The area of Pendle is thought to be a village by many people, but actually it's a borough. The borough of Pendle is, gets its name from the famous Pendle Hill which is over my shoulder. And it's on lays on the edge of the forest of Boland. But as it was mainly a, and still is an agricultural area, it did have its own industrial revolution. With the largest town of Nelson becoming a mill town, which also included some bell pits thrown into there. But with the discovery of coal, the Marsden Colliery was opened in Bria Fields and it fell into the Burnley coal fields. But with all this prosper industry in these small towns and villages across Pendle, the dark pass always peeks its head through. Alison Device was walking back towards her home around Pendle Hill. She came across of a Halifax born peddler called John Law. She asked John Law for pins and commonly pins were used by witches for spells. So John Law refused and he went on his own way, so did Alison. Alison did walk a little bit further forward before turning back and she found John Law on the floor. Convinced that it was her own powers, but Law more than likely had a stroke. Alison believed that her powers were strong and she thought she'd cause this incident with John Law due to muttering under her voice. So she visited John in his sick bed, in his sick bed, sorry, and John Law forgave her after she begged for forgiveness. But her family started getting visitations from magistrates, wanting answers, and so began the Pendle Witch Trials. Witch Trials were a popular thing in the 1600s Britain. One thing with the witch trials that the rise of Puritanism brought fear into the minds of the English people. Although we're very much seen in Wales, England and Scotland had its own witch trials after King James published his own book about demonology. And one of these witch trials happened down the south of England. One opportunistic witch finder called Matthew Hopkins called himself the Witchfinder General, tried up to 300 women in East Anglia and Essex. Matthew Hopkins, though, died at the age of 27 from tuberculosis. And many people thought he would pass away through his dunking technique, where he used to plunge women underwater. If they would float, they are a witch, and if they would die by drowning, they were innocent. But that was untrue. It was tuberculosis that took Hopkins and he left a legacy on British history which has stained Pendle. The local families which were accused, the Dendites and the Catacks, both had both saw six members combined accused of being witches. But it was a little bit of an incident that would happen which would see further more people being accused of being witches. The matriarch of the Dendites was Elizabeth Southern. She was well known in the area of Pendle and she was well known for being a local healer for 50 years, which saw scrutiny brought to her as well. Reports actually suggested that a meeting was held at the 
Demdike's home of Malkin Tower around Pendle Hill area. This meeting was put across as almost a cover meeting to try and break out members of the Demdike's family in Lancaster Castle. The meeting involved Elizabeth Southern and her friends. But Roger Noel, who was the magistrate tasked into getting the conviction, decided to take Alison's mentally challenged brother James into questioning and the interrogation found out, possibly against James' own will, that there was a cover meeting held here and the rest of the Demdike family would be arrested and taken to Lancaster Castle. During the trials, the testimony of Jeanette Device shocked everyone. Jeanette deemed Elizabeth Susan as a witch after Elizabeth screamed at her as she entered the court. Jeanette stated that she saw her mother turn into a spirit of a dog and plan to kill members of the community. By the way, Jeanette was a child. She would even go on to accuse her own brother of being a witch, putting the claim down that he killed people. And this would eventually be the one thing that sealed it for everyone. All ten were condemned to death. Death by hanging here at Pendle Hill on the 21st of August, 1612. Jeanette sold her family down the river and karma does come and bite everyone back. So Jeanette was later accused of being a witch herself. She ended up murdering the mother of Alice Nutter and one boy called Edmund Robinson decided that he witnessed Jeanette in a very similar fashion that she did 27 years before and Jeanette was acquitted eventually but she was held at Lancaster Castle until her debts were paid. The final witch trial in England was held in 1717 in Leicester over 300 witches were killed. Only 150 of, 15 of them, sorry, were executed, but that's down to the torture methods and the proven methods of Matthew Hopkins, which saw the Duncan technique. And one of the ways Pendle is remembered is here in Rufflees, and this is the statue of the quite a well-off family, his daughter, Alice Nutter, who sadly lost her life and she was one of the innocent people of Pendle, just accused of a mass hysteria. All this would go on to inspire the Puritans in America and Salem, world famous Salem witch trial. So more women hanged till they were dead. And the lessons wasn't learned in the new world. So I feel like we need to end this documentary in one fitting way only, and that is the names of the people who lost their lives here in Lancashire. Thank you.